Hello everyone. So I am Chetan Khatwi from Excellent Labs, Bangalore, India. I'll be speaking on uh, on the sport right now, AI technologies and uh, application for the enterprise. So mainly uh, I'll speak on uh, which is not the end slide, but I'll speak uh, when we create the model in machine learning in AI and when we want to develop the model on the mobile devices is little cumbersome. Because uh, you train your model, it requires uh, training on GPU. But it's like train on GPU, but do inference on mobile. So for that, uh, I'll, I'll discuss what are the tools are available, what are the techniques are uh, there. So as you know, software is eating the world, and AI is eating software. So GPU and TPU are eating the linear algebra. Linear algebra is eating deep learning, and deep learning is eating machine learning, and machine learning is eating eating the artificial intelligence and here is eating software and software is eating the world, right? So uh, basically when we define machine learning, it has mainly three components, software as supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning. And again, you can do deep learning with supervised and uh, unsupervised learning. But I, I mean 80% of economic growth in the market cap is super is an unsupervised learning. So you provide your data set uh, and then you uh, train it and do inference, right? And still, I believe um, deep learning is not that capable the way human beings think. Uh, we are not still the, uh, at the uh, edge of the brain of B at least. B can fly without uh, any obstacle, but uh, I mean, our software cannot fly without any obstacle the way. Uh, so the difference I feel uh, with the supervised learning and unsupervised learning, or the sorry, supervised uh, traditional machine learning and deep learning. In traditional machine learning, you need to define the uh, your features, and then it can train statistical machine learning. But in deep learning, uh, the model will automatically understand the kind of uh, features. Like if you provide the um, house price, so it understands the schooling will be good. But if uh, the society is paying good house price on that area. So for deep learning, is like if you provide the image, it will it will understand the uh, we see and sky kind of uh, object from this. And for this, uh, uh, we use the model, written model like YOLO 2 or kind of that, which is a it is understand the object and give you the outcome. Um, so we tried kind of uh, this is our demo. It detect the emotion of the person. So this is everything is pre-training. Uh, there is nothing uh, we have been trained. So what is the uh, technology? Behind this, convolution neural network, recurrent network, and the vision camera. It's just if we can uh, uh, create the smart camera, it's all about the vision. This we don't need anything else. If we, if we can make the uh, camera as smart as our eye, that can do everything. And this is the one I was talking about, the YOLO, right? So it it detect every object in a a video that it's a webcam right now, on Ubuntu CPU. Detect the bottle, chair, dining table, phone device, keyboard, cup, and a person. So this is not using any GPU like uh, NVIDIA XP <coughs> or like that. So it's inference. The one, the goal of this talk is like. You don't need GPU for inferencing, right? And uh, or, or it's like you you understand the architecture of the network. It has the input layer, hidden layer, and output layer. Or you just you just uh, bypass the fully connection layer and make it uh, uh, <coughs> inference working. Um, so as you know, AI and uh, Neural network were there uh, from very long, but uh, why it took a lot of time to come uh, on the enterprise level or, or at the application level? 
because at that time uh, it was not web scale data and you see every uh, year we are doubling the volume of data and we got uh, massive adoption of GPU and DPU at the industry so it made uh, it was not only the uh, uh, innovation at uh, software side but hardware side it was a good innovation and we got uh, different different uh, architecture from the uh, different labs like Google, DeepMind, Google Brain um, and uh, from Toronto, Bengio and uh, Geoffrey Hinton, uh, Ian Goodfellow, Facebook, uh, Jan Lacon and uh, Somit Sintana from different IT Hyderabad and uh, so this different different uh, R and D uh, fellow they uh, they publish their papers. Just they publish their quick and source code. So that help to the community and open source uh, society to learn from that and uh, change the architecture and uh, uh, deploy to the product level. So as I say, the supervised learning is just required the input and it gives the response. If you just map the input and response in a very well manner it works like for example if you provide input as an email and uh, you you provide response is it either is a spam or not or you provide image and uh, you you want uh, whether it's a, which object is from numbering okay and you provide audio and text and you provide uh, machine translation which is a little uh, not accurate uh, work in the research and what can be done with machine learning and AI use cases? Uh, you can do character recognition, OCR, you can do computer vision, you can build the convolutional dialogue agent with the bots. And uh, new thing that uh, one of the lab from DeepMind, uh, person Andrew Trask is trying, is a decentralized uh, artificial intelligence with the help of blockchain. So, couple of use cases as you see in AI, we are not taking care of data security because it's public data and uh, so that concept is a federated learning. So tools and technology as of now, um, we, use, uh, we can use R, Scala and Python for data quality, Pandas, NumPy and uh, Spark, uh, there is one packet in Apache Spark called uh, data cleaning. For predictive modeling, we use scikit-learn, scikit-image, plain ML, uh, state models, and sparkling ML. Deep learning, there is a various framework from different different uh, um, uh, open source uh, companies and societies like TensorFlow from Google, Cafe um, was from Cafe2 from Facebook, and Keras from the Google, Intel, Neon, White House from Facebook, and Penetrator <coughs> from Baidu, MXTent from Amazon, Seeing Take Care of Microsoft. So the problem is like uh, you you create one model in one framework, but if you want to exchange to any other framework, it takes a lot of time. So after that, uh, Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft started a project called the O N N X that does the interchange of the format. So if you create the, your model train your model in a PyTorch and want it to transfer that pickle file of written model which is compatible for TensorFlow. You can use O N N X dot A uh, open source uh, toolkit and there's contribution by uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Amazon and Google. You can really uh, characterize the uh, workload of machine learning so it takes uh, less time to spawn up the instance and less time to uh, close the instance. For data visualization, totally seaborn uh, and different tools. You can schedule each and every the front job with Ansible or Airflow with open source. And GP1 and we use the UPI for Python client or NVIDIA CUDA. So machine learning process is a learning. You, uh, we, we use to collect and prepare the training data, choose and optimize your machine learning model, set up and manage environment for training, train and tune the model, deploy model in production, scale, manage the production environment. So high level, e either we can use any um, APIs from AWS, Azure or Google and set up the environment. This is the mainly some of the algorithm that we use, uh, like Exiboost also support the Apache Spark as a module. So 
as of now, the tensor of flow and uh, pi torques are not very concurrent and parallelized the way it worked with the Apache Spark and kind of frameworks. So you need in scikit-learn your data should be on the same node. You cannot distribute the data and uh, uh, spawn of the different different nodes. And for that, uh, Apache Spark community is working with uh, to come up with a new package called Tensor <coughs> a Frame and Graph Frame. So upcoming 2.4, you will be able to uh, train and deploy models with Apache Spark. Um, this is Sam. So this is one of the uh, use cases like uh, uh, it's not only personalized and provides recommendation using the uh, text data, but the visual uh, search and visual recommendation. So you provide the just uh, your in this case, you, you can see I provided my image. It understood the pattern, color, my gender. That's why you can see everything is uh, for male there. And the pattern also, the text was a division, so it's not <coughs> division. Uh, it's not very clear in the here. Otherwise, in the pleasure is also pleasure there from the one of the uh, shopping website. As you know, the computer vision right now, 80% of traffic on the internet is uh, visual data. So we can think like if we put, if we uh, provide like advertisement and a user. So can we predict like whether this user will click on this ad or not, like that? Or we might think if we provide the wireframe, can that generate the screen or not? If we provide the screenshot, can we generate the source code in form of HTML or not? Yeah, so that's possible with one of the open source uh, library from Airbnb. So you just give the uh, uh, pen on paper over there in a form of uh, wireframe, it will generate the screen for you from the... Because just you need to map the uh, input and response. If you provide the input as a, this uh, thing as a file, and then if you provide the component, it will map and generate for you in terms of inference, real time. For NLP, it's all about uh, ingestion of unstructured data and uh, it can does the application as a entity recognition. There's a key phrase recognition, language recognition and sentiment and topic modeling. And this is all technique and the business application that you can use. Uh, and so that's it from us. Any questions? Um, there is something that's not there in this slide I would like to talk. Um, so what happens that uh, if, we, if you train the model on TensorFlow or PyTorch and if you want to deploy that to the mobile, so there's two tools. Uh, one is the TensorFlow Lite. So that has a .tf light uh, extension. So you can provide your .pb or .s5 extension, which is a pretend model in TensorFlow, and pass it to the TensorFlow Lite. It will compress your matrices and vectors inside the pretend model and will give it to you in a form of lightweight TF light. So then you can use Android and do inference with your phone camera API of Android anything. On the other side, with uh, iOS, there's auto ML library. So that you can use Keras, uh, you can just import uh, AutoML and pass the fully connection layer to the uh, AutoML. It will generate the .AutoML file for you in iOS and then you will be able to use that in your mobile. So it's like if you train your model on GPU or CPU, if you want to showcase or uh, use in any product or application in mobile, you can use either AutoML for iOS or uh, Android, you can use uh, uh, TensorFlow Lite. And that provides fully flexible and the uh, comparison and uh, uh, compatibility with the, all the APIs from iOS and Android. So you can do ingestion with the camera and supply data to the um, your model. There, there is some of the patent model with uh, auto ML like uh, YOLO or facial recognition or gender detection on the kind of GitHub repo that you can utilize and use that. Yeah, that's it from my side. Any questions? I have a question. So, in in terms of the full life cycle of a uh, of such a project, machine learning deep learning project that is going from uh, 
collecting data, training, and then operationalizing. What's the pain point for you right now? What's the pain the most point is for, uh, I believe, is the pre-processing of data. So this all models requires the data in some format. If you do not pre-process, and if you give the noise to the model, it will not understand automatically this is noise, right? So you need to process data in a, such a format, otherwise it will be have bias. <coughs> So that's the only pain point. Otherwise, this called TensorFlow and Pytorch or Cafe 2 is, is very well highly on APIs. And right now, it does use the Python. And Python is not type safe like Scala, right? So you, you won't get compile time safety at the, at the top when you train the model. If you train your model for two days, and if you get error, it feels a little pain <laughs> at heart. It's not Scala or type safe. That, uh, that's why the, my point was like Scala a Spark dataset API from Spark 2.3 is a type safe. Type safe in a sense it gives you compile time error. If you do spell mistake like select S double E L E T, it will give you error on the spot. So you don't wait for eight hours when you workload run on the cluster and then if you get pain, it's really painful. Because debugging on distributed computing is really cumbersome. Like when I was working with Akka actors systems it is really cumbersome and actually spark is uh, was trying to use the Akka actors actor is a lightweight uh, uh, <coughs> a format of passing a message and uh, extent of message rather than thread but you can utilize Akka, Akka actor Akka persistence uh, library and uh, because it supports the Scala way that works well but uh, because of the research and gap between academia Python is well versed with the all framework for deep learning and uh, machine learning. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you so much, Jordan. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay.